talk, even though it's the last talk of the day, and it's about something as incredibly boring as governance. I do deeply appreciate it, and I hope that we can both get this done really quickly and cover some important topics in an interesting and easy to understand way. Now, I don't want to be too formal, so any questions, let me know. Anything at all, in fact, let me know. Just put your hand up or throw something at my head. The uh, formal subject today is open source governance today, where we are and where we're going. Uh, who knows what governance is? One person, good. Two, come on. Hey, do you know what it is? <laughs> um, okay, so governance, just to give a brief idea, everyone talks about compliance a lot, right? Uh, compliance is one part of governance. Governance is all the type of management that we do in terms of developing and deploying code or products. It's sort of management of code. So we're going to talk about the management of this from the perspective of business and legal, mostly kind of touching on the legal side. Now, just to give you some context, you'll notice in the top left of the screen that there's a little logo saying Open Invention Network. That's the company I'm with. Open Invention Network was set up by some other companies. That's there. We've got IBM, NEC, Nobel, Philips, Red Hat, and Sony. And there's other important organizations working with OIN too, like Oracle, Google, and Compton. OIN is basically focused on the legal side of open source technology. We're focused on patents specifically. That will appear in my talk a little bit later because it's what I'm really interested in. But first, the big picture stuff. The big picture is the incredible revelation that open source has nothing to do with code. And it really has nothing to do with licenses either. Open source is not really about these things. They're very important, obviously. You kind of need software code to have functioning software. And you sort of need licenses to share that code. But that's not what open source is about. Open source is not about that. Open source is about the power of people. It's about a way for people to work together, to collaborate. Having a lot of people working together means that you can solve more problems in a more efficient way. Basically, it leads to better solutions for everyone. So open source is a way for people to collaborate to get better solutions. That's what it's really about. Not code, not licenses. When we talk about open source governance, what we're really talking about is what's the best and most efficient way from a business and legal perspective to get everyone working together to get those better solutions. That's the big picture. Okay, so basically when you look at open source, you're looking at how to keep that value of collaboration. That's the key to success. Open source needs collaboration to drive value. Open source facilitates it and allows the collaboration that drives value. More collaboration means more value. Therefore, pretty logically, less collaboration means less value. So for us, when we say open source, and when we talk about open source in business or open source in community, in fact, open source anywhere, we're saying we want more collaboration, not less. More collaboration means more value, whether we're a developer or a business. Less collaboration does not. So more collaboration good, less collaboration bad. Fairly simple, fairly basic, but a very important concept. And that's where we are today. We actually are. Uh, we know that. <laughs> the message is loud and clear, as I still say on my slide. You know, community participants all around the world, whether it's individuals, governments, companies, everyone is collaborating more and more. That's as obvious in Taiwan as it is in the United States, or it is in Japan as it is in India. Everyone is collaborating more. Licenses, like the GPL, are being appreciated as documents that help us collaborate well together, that help us have common rules and common understanding, so we all feel that it's fair and just. And where there are challenges, like in the supply chain or with patents, we're dealing with them. We are collaborating not only on things like developing software, but we're collaborating on dealing with issues like how to make sure the supply chain understands licenses like the GPL, or how to make sure that 
and speculation. Things like trolls are dealt with as well. We're solving that. We're working together today because basically everyone in open source who has any amount of experience in open source gets it. More collaboration good, less collaboration bad. And that's it, really. You know, when we talk about open source governance, where we are, that's where we are. What's next? Well, more collaboration, better understanding, more of the same. And we're finished. <laughs> that's it. We already worked it out. There's no secret here. organizations 
rather than existent. Again, this idea of non-aggression. Let's all work together. It's basically a way for us to keep Linux growing and making sure that patents don't stop it. Specifically, in this case study, and I think it's quite a good number here, Hawaii has a community of over 550 organizations that pledge they will never use a patent against the Linux system. Over 550, that is by far the world's largest group of companies and projects to create on one thing ever. Uh, it also is a company that obtains patents important to Linux and open innovation. They don't go into dangerous places in the market. And then OIM gives free licenses to absolutely everyone who promises never to be aggressive towards Linux. So in other words, the community agrees not to be aggressive. The problem patents can be taken out of the market and given away to everyone. So that this stuff doesn't hit us, that it doesn't damage us, that this doesn't cause a lack of collaboration. When it comes to protecting Linux, OIN works to stop patent-related threats. That means, for example, helping organizations that are facing threats. In other words, when a company or a project is attacked by patents, they can call us, and we're going to try and solve it. Because if it's about open source, and someone comes after open source with patents, we need to solve it, not just for one company, not for one project, but for everyone using open source to be safe in the future. We help organizations create defensive publications. Who knows what that is? A defensive publication. Hands up. Yeah. The first time that went up was it the guy wearing that baseball cap, the blue baseball cap. Football cap. Whatever. <laughs> that's that's Armine Hamill. He's one of the people running our defensive publications program. So that yeah, I know you know it. Um, but quite a few people put their hands up. That was really good. Uh, defensive publications are an alternative to patents. A defensive publication is where you record an innovation, patent officers can see it, and they won't grant a patent for that innovation. But the defensive publication isn't like a patent in that you will never charge for it, you have no restriction on it. It's like public domain for ideas, and it means that trolls or aggressive companies would never patent your idea. It's a very important sense. And we deal with problem patents in the market. If there's a crazy patent being applied for, or a crazy patent in the market, we will work in programs to basically disarm those patents before they cause trouble. So there's ways to stop bad applications, and there's ways to stop bad patents when we do that. And finally, influencer. So OIN goes around the world and talks to people, and you know, when people are doing Linux, maybe they are not so interested in talking about patents but we annoy them about it anyway, constantly, because we need to have everyone help us stop patent aggression around Linux. And we go to places, talk to policymakers, to the media, to politicians themselves, basically saying open source is almost an unstoppable, brilliant way to manage innovation around software. Today, it drives a $50 billion economy. You've got enormous amounts of projects in our countries depending on it. The future of lawmaking around areas like patents needs to take that into account and make sure that OIM, its mission, its community, we're understood and that open source is not threatened continually from patent aggression. It isn't threatened continually from non-practicing entities or aggressive companies who don't want to compete on products but are trying to use patents instead of competing on products. So we're talking to everyone and saying, hear us. Open source is important. It needs a good future. We know what we need to do with regards to patents. Let's work together. Uh, and of course, OIM, and when I was saying we work together, we work with everyone. Some examples, you know, Linux Foundation, we work constantly with those guys, Software Freedom Law Center, we provide free legal counsel to all our projects out there. And we work with individual companies, projects, foundations to understand where the market's going. Huge, huge, huge global discussion about what is Linux today, what is the Linux system today, what packages need to be protected, how do we protect them, what's the danger. Under attack? Is it a pattern? We're going all over the world to work with everyone to make sure that patents do not be the open source, period. Anyway, summary, you're nearly there. What you really need to know.
is that OIN asks everyone to join a community that pledges they would never use a patent aggressively against the Linux system. That simple promise is unbelievably important and unbelievably valuable. This community is free, obviously. It's free to join. All it is is a simple promise. We just want that promise. We don't care if you pull the patent or not. We want everyone involved in Linux, every project, every company to make the same promise that if they had a patent, they would never use the Linux patents. The reason we want that promise is to create a norm. Who knows what a norm means? Heads up again. Not so many. Okay, I'm going to expand it. A norm is like a standard of behavior, a standard of behavior. So we want to create a standard of behavior that everyone doing Linux says they will never use a patent against Linux. It doesn't matter if they have a patent or not. We want everyone to make that statement so that it becomes the standard of behavior. Everyone involved in Linux would never use a patent against Linux. That is the standard of behavior we want to create. And if we work together, we can reduce the risk of patent aggression permanently around open source. That's the big important thing. And the cool thing, more flashy slides. Oops. The cool thing is it just makes sense. If you think about it, these type of ideas of everyone agreeing on a standard of behavior, it's the same as development. It's just like in, you know, when you're doing Linux, this is how you develop a Linux kernel. The legal side too. Everyone obeys the GPL in the same way. Everyone should deal with patents in the same way. Everyone should just play an even game here so that we can all collaborate as much as possible. And we're making a lot of progress. We're making a lot of progress. In Taiwan, we're making some progress. We've got some companies up here and some projects that have joined the OIN community so far. Uh, uh, I just actually went to the Clonezilla desk downstairs. Did anyone go there at Clonezilla? They have lots of great stuff. I stole tons of stickers and bookmarks and things. Anyway. In Taiwan, these are the companies and projects so far that have stepped up and said, we will never use a patent aggressively against Linux at any point in the future, period. So far. Next question, how about you? Next question, yeah. Please step up, please support patent non-aggression today. Join the other people who are doing it. 550 companies and projects worldwide, a bunch in Taiwan. Your name, your project, your company should be right up there. Because we all need to do this to make Linux safe for the future. We know that. But today is, we've got a huge number of people stepping up to do this. Whether it's Google or Fujitsu, LG Electronics, NHN, the game company in Korea. The list goes on and on. CentOS as well. Jinji Foundation, all a whole bunch of people. But the rest of you who are not up on that list, need to get up there too. Because we've got 550 today, why don't we have 1,000? Why don't we have 2,000? We know those numbers are out there. We need those voices to make sure that we put to rest permanently the challenges of patents and Linux. So, end of case study. Basically, we have worked out how to deal with patent challenges and against open source. We know that. And what we have to do is keep doing what we're doing, keep increasing measures and we'll be fine. Like with everything else in open source, the power of everyone working together is solving the problems we need to solve. It's a very simple approach and a very effective approach. That's why it's, it's the core of mainstream technology. Anyway, that's it. Thank you for your time. You can contact me anytime you want. You can also ask a question direct right now while I'm here. I'll be here tomorrow as well for the conference. And uh, I'm done for the evening. Escape, bring beer up, you pass out, whatever. <laughs> Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, three minutes for QA. Does anyone have an incredibly difficult question? No, it was like I'm going to go home. <laughs> yep, I think we're done. Okay, uh, so I'm kind of the corporate guy for putting people into the community of licensees. The guy with the Blue, is it football hat? Football. Okay, the blue baseball cap. 
<laughs> that guy is really cool with stuff like defensive publications and other community measures. So we're both here, we're both around the conference, so you can catch us any time. All right, see you tomorrow.